What out, chaps? How's it going? I was in Seattle for the last week, um, which, which in itself was an interesting thing to discuss because the fucking airport was deserted. It looked like someone with the fucking walking dead, except I didn't see anyone getting the face chewed off. One thing that did make me laugh <laughs> was uh, while I was visiting the Space Needle, uh, there, there was a fucking sign for an app right next to the fucking thing. Like, you're literally sitting in the shadows of the fucking Space Needle. And there's this telling you that what you can do is, if you if you really want, you can download the app, and then you can, um, <clears throat> using the miracles of modern technology, digitise yourself into the, into the image, and have a picture of yourself stood next to the Space Needle, even though you're standing next to the cunt. You can literally take two steps back and f take a photograph of the fucker. So... <laughs> One of the weirdest fucking things I've ever seen in my entire life. Like that is surely one of the most redundant inventions I've ever seen. I'd even put that up there with the with the fucking baguette backpack, which is a real thing. Fucking Google it. Or the uh, the umbrella drone, like a drone that you pilot using intricate skill with both hands to make the drone fly over your head and follow you around with an umbrella attached to it. Despite the fact that that takes two hands and a great amount of concentration, as opposed to holding a fucking umbrella like a normal human. Anyway, to the BBC, uh, you would think there would only be one news story this week, but the BBC being the BBC, it definitely isn't. Um, a mere scroll down the homepage avoids all the coronavirus and gets to the really, the big issues that vex us in life, like, um, the fascinating codes of teenage flirting. A typical story of unbridled narcissism as usual uh, for these young fucking guardianistas that read this claptrap um, that, you know, make it all about you. Half the fucking world's getting diseased, pensioners are dying off in the thousands and uh, they want to make it all about them, don't they? I cancelled my wedding because of coronavirus. Well, what else were you going to do? If you can't even get catering <laughs> and the fucking subway is closed, how the fuck are you going to have one? And then fantastic stories like this. The boss, male investors didn't get my billion dollar idea. Well, of course they didn't. Because they're fucking having a cock makes your IQ 30 points lower. Right, we know that BBC. You tell us every fucking week. Or oh, this disturbing, peculiar story. Are female urinals the answer to cues that lose? Again, you know I always tell you, if the BBC asks you a question, you know the answer's no. <laughs> Definitely. And just by looking at that picture and reading that headline, I can tell you without clicking on it that they definitely aren't the answer to cues at the lose because nobody wants to see. I'm assuming you will get three sets of beef curtains huddled around that fucking device. <laughs> and I don't think most women want to be spreading the fucking piss flaps in front of another group of women. Maybe I'm wrong. Let's read it. Find out. So it says uh, a few years ago, Nathalie Des Isnants, they even have like middle class arseholes names, don't they? Was attending a music festival and planning to watch her favourite group. Before the show, they headed to the toilets. I spent 30 minutes in the queue waiting to pee. Much to her frustration, she missed the first part of the concert. This is why we need dirty standing minge urinals, of course. Meanwhile, David just took just two minutes and saw the whole show. I was upset, I told myself. We're in the 21st century. Something should be done about that. Like what? Unless you're going to transform the female genitalia into a, I don't know, like a big, long, sort of sticky out thing that you can shake around with ease. Uh, unless you can do something about that. <laughs> I don't see what the fucking 21st century has to do with anything. She said about creating a women's urinal. Up until now, nobody cared. But she said her invention, uh, Madame P, was used at 15 events across France. And it fits all women, not only young ones, open to innovation. Hmm. Said it's a female toilet consisting of three squat urinals moulded from bright pink recyclable plastic. It has to be bright pink. Is that camouflage for your gash? You know? It's just insanely more efficient. There's no reason women shouldn't have them as well. Well, there is. I love the way you have to have research for this as well. According to their research, 90% of toilet cues are for women only, only needing to urinate. Well, what do you need to do more frequently? Go for a shite or go for a piss? I don't think I need to do research to figure the, the math out for that one. Probably the average day. Ask a bloke. How many times do you reckon you have a piss in a day? I don't know. Eight or nine. How many times do you have a shite? Once. Done. 
Easy that, won't it? He said, getting women accustomed to urinals is one challenge, but Gina says women have welcomed their design. Oh, I'll bet they fucking have. So listen, short version of this. Women don't take longer at the bathroom because of the patriarchy. They take longer in the bathroom because they fuck about a lot more. I've seen this dozens of times in California, you know, when you go to breweries in fucking trendy cities, all across America, happened to me in Cincinnati as well, and you get these fucking all-gender restrooms, and you end up having to queue for a piss when you're a bloke, and it's, it's shit for everyone. The women don't want to stand, don't want to use a bathroom after a dirty, hairy-ass bloke has snapped off a foot of brown cable and it smells like a fucking badger died in there. They don't want to follow us in the bathroom, and the men don't want to have to queue. So just leave them separate, it's fine. Maybe have a third one for everybody else. The system works. Women have to queue because women fuck about more in the toilet. That's just a fact. Ask any woman who's not a lunatic and she'll tell you the same thing. They go in there, they often go in pairs. Doesn't happen with men, right? You don't, you don't got any to piss. Are you coming, mate? I'll shake yours, you shake mine. We can talk about shopping and cock while we're in there. That doesn't happen, but women do it. They go together. They go in fucking pairs, they gossip, they even do the makeup and fuck about in there. There's nothing you can do now when you're a bloke other than piss, which is why men are happy to stand around a big metal bathtub and fucking jostle cocks with loads of other blokes like you do at a football stadium. It's just different. Build more toilets for the women. Please don't have them reducing to the filth that we men are happy to accept because that's, I don't think that's something anybody wants to fucking see. <laughs> Let's see what this billion dollar idea was. Stitch fix. I didn't join the women in business clubs and I never thought of myself as a quote unquote feminist. There was so much more adversity that I faced just because I was a woman. Of course, of course she says that. Because if you can constantly go on about how much harder you've had it, then you're more awesome than everyone, aren't you? That's, again, it's just narcissism. You don't want to say, actually, it wasn't that hard. You want to go, oh man, it was, I fucking toiled away. Fuck all those old lazy cunts going down the coal mines for 14 hours a day in the fucking 19th century. Fucking losers. They don't know how hard it was for me to sit in a boardroom with perfect hair and makeup and have arguments with people. I'm fucking telling you, that's work. Whenever you read the stories, it never sounds hard, does it? It says, her sister, a fashion buyer, was also an inspiration. So straight away, if your sister's a fashion buyer and you're doing a fashion brand, I wonder how much that helped. And then it's like, oh, to pursue her idea, she enrolled at Harvard. Not something the average person <laughs> can just do on a whim. I've had a good idea, enroll in Harvard. Is it that easy, is it? Might, it might be if you're a fucking Hollywood actress, or you want to smoke a few poles to fucking grease the wheels. Grease the poles? Whatever. She lives in San Francisco, everything's hard, her mother's an immigrant. Fuck off. More bollocks on the homepage. How to manage OCD and anxiety? Well, oh, fucking hell, surely the OCD's an absolute winner if the fucking coronavirus is going around. If there's one cunt who's going to be good at washing his hands, it's going to be some fucker with uh, OCD and anxiety. First world problems. Get your fucking hands washed 90 times a day. Winner. Australian charged over supermarket fight. You knew if there was one place where some cunt's gonna get chinned, it's fucking Australia. Uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna bore you with the video. I'm sure you've all been sat watching the fuckers on fucking Facebook. Debate takeaways. Biden wants a woman VP. Obviously, again, again, how how is that liberal? If you just if you know if you don't care about anyone's personal qualities before you even get started, you just go. It has to be a woman. It has to be a woman. That's not a fucking liberal position to take. Might be someone who's got really great qualities and they happen to not be a woman. Have you just got to ignore them now? That's a fucking liberal principle, is it? Is it? It isn't. It's almost as bad as when Trudeau did it. Do you remember that? When Trudeau said, "Oh, half my cabinet's going to be women," even though there was like twenty-five percent women in Parliament or something. By definition, he's got to take not the best people. It's like when you're a fucking kid and you play, you're picking teams in football. Remember, and you and you, they go, oh, "Dave and Jonesy, you pick teams," and then they split up and they go, "Bob and Alan," and you start picking through people. And inevitably, the most morbidly obese, one-legged fucking bloke with a hacking cough, he's last because it's a meritocracy. Well, <laughs> open that up if it was women and men and you were playing footy, you still would have the one-legged 
partially sighted fat fucker left at the end, regardless of the gender. You get women that are like athletic and fit, and you go, oh, definitely, uh, not that fucking fat bloke. That's that in the microcosm. That is what I'm talking about. It's it's in a wholly illogical, and anyone who's not a fucking idiot knows it. So ridiculous, just ridiculous on the face of it. Don't even need me to go through that, dear. Fucking stupid. <sighs> No makeup photo exhibition, making women for over 40 invisible. They love using that language, don't they? Again, the slippery language they use is always the same. About informing outcomes and making me be seen. I've got to be seen. Well, what do you mean, making them visible? They are visible. You see the fuckers wrestling over tea bags in fucking Aldi? They're always visible. I've seen dozens of them knocking the shit out of each other for toilet paper in the last two weeks. Oh, we can fucking see them. Giving them visibility and a voice. It's like a mantra. They use the same shite little quips every time. Visibility and a voice. Fuck off. Everyone knows they've got a voice. The old people are the ones who do all the voting. So maybe stop whinging about the over 40s and worry about the under 30s because them little twats don't bother going to the fucking polls. Yeah, all right, look. Fucking old women in black and white photos. Marvellous. What Again, why is this shit on the BBC? Do you want to read it? No. <laughs> Andrew Gillum. <laughs> they were going on about him all last year because he's like the fucking rising star. Everyone's been talking about him. Oh, he's fucking great. He's the new Obama. He's fucking... He's this, he's that. So, obviously, he's been caught in a hotel room off his box with a rent boy <laughs> who was doing meth. Like, that's just par for the course, isn't it? With fucking politicians these days. The sort of enter the public consciousness and it just makes them like like arrogant as fuck they become because basically in this day and age if you're a politician you're famous so they start thinking they can act like it they start th acting like fucking keith moon or mick jagger and just doing mad shit like what the fuck is a 40 year old man doing off his box with a dead rent boy and bags of meth everywhere i mean <laughs> it's it's fucking mad isn't it you wouldn't meet a 40 year old plumber who'd do it but the daft cunts who are supposed to run our entire society, they do this fucking shit all the time. They love it. Not as much as he loves meth and rent boys, but he, but he loves it. Loves the attention. He's apologised and said it was a wake-up call to seek help. Oh, yeah. Help. Mr. Gillum, the first democratic African-American fucking... Uh, just even that annoys me about all the identity politics. It makes everything a fucking mouthful, doesn't it? You can't just put Mr. Gillum, democratic nominee for governor. It's got to be the first Democratic African-American nominee. Fucking... But anyway, he narrowly lost the 2018 race to the Republican Ron DeSantis. Well, <laughs> they made the right fucking decision, didn't they? <laughs> the margin of loss was less than one percentage point. Fucking hell, so they dodged a bullet. Hi, guys, come on in. Who do we think made the right call there? <laughs> yep, fucking hell, I would never have guessed it. American media's been strangely silent on this story. It's almost like they don't want to talk about it. I wonder why. So, the last thing to talk about, right? Coronavirus. Fucking, it's everywhere. Essentially, the whole Western world's playing catch up and doing what the Chinese were doing from the get go, which is fucking logical again to any working class stiff who knows anything. You could look at this problem, your fucking granddad could look at the fucking paper for 10 minutes and go, oh, we need to do this. But these fuckwits that are in charge need, need fucking a month of consultations billed to the taxpayer before they can figure anything out. It, it's fucking common sense. If you want to arrest it and it's extremely easy to pass on to other people, you need to fucking sort your life out. Put in a load of measures that we, the people, won't do because we don't give a fuck and we're all self-centred cunts and we're like, fuck off, disease, I'm alright, I'm going to the pub anyway. Right, that's why they're doing it. Ultimately, I support them. I think you've got to fucking square away. We don't want to kill a load of pensioners just because we're selfish cunts and we want to go to the gym or go to the boozer. So um, they need to just get heavy-handed with it and say, right, fucking bar and shit, lock stuff down, don't let fucking people in. And uh, yeah, put measures in place and we all have to stop being a bunch of cunts and try. Because, you know, it might not bother me because I won't give a fuck. I'll go running two days a week. 
my knees are bad. I've, I've had to knock it on the head a bit with the running. Um, I've got the gym plenty. I've got strong lungs. I don't give a fuck. But it's not about me, is it? It's about the old cunts who are coming to contact. It's all well and good me going, I don't give a fuck about no pansy-ass coronavirus, but then if I fucking go around to see me granddad in the old people's home, and the next thing I fuck bury 30 of them cunts, it's not really acceptable for me to say, well, I'm all right. And I think that's human nature, which explains the silly cunts. Uh, you never see any good footage on the BBC fucking fannies but yeah it, which explains that shit right all the fighting in the fucking supermarkets everyone knocking the shite out of each other look at that one did you cough at me <laughs> some cunt's gonna get punched for coughing on a train the point is the crowd are idiots right we all we all think about ourselves first and ultimately if this is keeling over old people in an alarmingly high percentages then we need to all stop fucking whinging and knuckle down and do what's required World War Two spirit, spirit of the Blitz, right? Yeah, <clears throat> there's a good picture that sums it up. That was fucking rationing queues during World War Two. This is the shit you see now all around the fucking world. People knacking each other for a fucking for basic shit like bog rolls or toothpaste or something. There's no fucking need for it. So I'm gonna go against my usual, um, my usual script and say at the end of the day, think about it. It's not about us. It's not about the kids. It's about the fucking pensioners. If we kill a fucking, if everyone catches it because we don't give a fuck about, we just think about ourselves and then we end up killing over millions of them. It's fucking harsh on the poor old cunts. They've paid their income taxes all lives. It's a bit harsh for us to fuck them all now. So yeah, um, relax, keep calm. The, the, the idea, I went to the store yesterday, the grocery store, and um, there was fucking, there was hardly out in there because people have gone mental. I seen a big fat Mexican bird walking off with like 10 cans of soup. But this is the point. A small part of my brain went, oh, maybe I should get some soup. And then I thought, no, I hardly ever eat the fucking stuff. What people do is they panic. I remember, you know, in doing military training, like when you're very first learning to put a, a sling on a rifle, 90% sure you've got it. And you put it on and then you look to your right and the guy's doing it different. And then you look to the left and the guy's doing it different. Like they're both, if they're both doing it differently to you, you go, all right, you second guess yourself. And even though you were doing it right, you go, oh, I better copy them. And then you copy them. And there's other guys there who had it right and they don't they copy them because it's like the herd mentality and the next thing the corporal comes around you've all got it wrong and then you all get forced to fucking ah, hang off the fucking door jam like fruit bats <laughs> generally tortured for a bit because it's human nature you second guess yourself and what causes it is again i'm not having to go at everyone and i'm not immune to it but you see people being total fuckwits and you copy them so fucking relax don't copy them buy what you need in a normal shop that you wouldn't every week do as you're fucking told T try not to be a fucking hot shot and go i don't care because i'm nails which is a very male response that's what i was like eh fuck it i'll go to seattle probably shouldn't have went human nature we do stupid shit because we only think about ourselves but um in the week in the coming week i just say relax follow the government guidelines for a change let's not just worry about ourselves let's uh Let's do the right thing for everybody involved. Almost like the commies, except not completely fucking mental. And uh, on that note, I'll, uh, I'll probably make a video tomorrow because everyone's fucking sat in and no one's doing anything. I might as well try and motivate myself to do some more shit on here because um, I think people need a bit more entertainment, don't they? Seeing there's no cunts allowed out. Hope everyone's doing well. Remember, don't go and see your granddad for, for a couple of weeks. And uh, I'll see you guys in a bit. Take it easy.